Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tia, if you are new here. Today is a special day because the day that I'm filming this is my husband and I's wedding anniversary of four years, which I feel like time is just weird because it feels like I've been with him my entire life. And so four years like really doesn't, but like four years doesn't really feel like that long of a time. But four years is still an accomplishment. We have moved, I think, four or five times. We have a dog, we have two kids. Like, we have lived a lot of life in this time. Um, and so I thought, what better day to talk about marriage on a video? I don't think I've ever talked about it. Um, and some of these things maybe are specific to marriage and some are just specific to like godly Christian relationships in general. And so don't click away just because you're not married. But today I thought, what better day to talk about four things I have learned in four years of marriage. Now. Before we hop in, I just want to give a disclaimer. We have not been married for 50 plus years. We do not know everything. We are constantly learning. Um, actually, just this past week, we had a couple little moments where we had to work through things and talk through things. And we are constantly learning and growing and learning each other. And I mean, that could be a tip in itself. But just because we've been only married four years doesn't mean we have nothing to offer. But I'm not coming on here saying we are of a perfect marriage and we know everything. So I think someone married two years is constantly growing and I think somebody married for 50 years is also constantly learning and growing as you and your spouse are also constantly changing and just evolving. So today we're giving four tips of things that I have learned in four years of marriage. The first tip I want to share today of something that I've learned is the word intentional. Now, I actually came out with my small business. One of the articles of clothing I came out with this past year was something that said intentionally happy. I love the word intentional, intention, good intentions, just all of the intentions. I think that every relationship takes intentionality. I think if you are dating somebody and you are pursuing them and you are going out of your way to do nice things for them and you are being intentional to get to know them more and spend time with them and then you get married and all of a sudden think like, I got them, I'm good, I think we have it all wrong. I love just the idea and the word of anything that, marriage is hard, relationships are hard, they take work and anything that takes work is going to require you being intentional, going out of your way, continuing to pursue them. And I think important, like regular date nights are important. I think having quality time where at the end of the day you sit down, even once kids are in bed and you're exhausted, spending five minutes together, like something. I've heard of couples who say like once they have kids that they, it's hard to spend time and they're like, I barely see my spouse. We like, I don't even know if I kissed them today or hugged them or told them that I love them. And it's like, that's such an important thing. Constantly pursue your spouse. Like when your kids are grown up and they're out of the house and when other things happen in your life, like who's gonna be there? Your spouse, like it takes work, but it's so rewarding when you put that work in. And as I mentioned, you and your spouse are both constantly changing. And so taking in that work to say like, hey, I want to get to know you more. I still want to date you. I still want to pursue you and go out of my way for you because I care about you. And just because we said I do years ago, it doesn't mean that it's like, I'm good now. Like no work's needing to be put in now. It's like, no, we are constantly changing. Life still happens and you need to put in the work to continue to know the person that you've married. And it's so rewarding. It takes work, it's not always easy, but it's so rewarding and marriage is so beautiful that like being intentional and going out of your way and doing those little things like leaving your husband little notes around the house, cooking a really delicious meal, like cleaning the house before he gets home from work, like all these ways are intentional ways to say like, I care about you, I care about our relationship, like I, I know that a stressful space creates more stress and so I want our space to be clean for you and for us and just let's go on a date night, I booked a babysitter. Like all these things are pretty small, but overall like you're putting in that work to make your marriage grow and your marriage mature and it takes being intentional, but it's so, so worth it. My second tip is serve, serve, serve. I heard this quote and I didn't actually write down exactly how it was quoted, so I have zero clue how it was actually quoted, but it was something along the lines of like, 
think how happy and like joy filled you and your your spouse would be if every single day both of your your like highest priority like next to pursuing the Lord was to serve. If my husband Trevor and I both separately woke up every single day saying, I want to serve him. I want to serve her. How can I go out of my way to serve Trevor? How can I go out of my way to serve Tia? Like think about how happy we would be. Like something as simple as I'm going to get the kids dressed for the day this morning so Tia doesn't have to. Like I know my daughter needs milk. I'm going to get her milk so Tia doesn't have to. Or for me, I'm going to make sure that Trevor has a really good like lunch. So I'm going to already prep it for him the night before so that he's good to go in the morning or like he's got some clean clothes here. I'm going to put them away for him. Like things like that, you are serving your spouse and think of how joy filled your marriage would be if you both the forefront of your mind was to serve. And this is an area that I have had to grow in because it can be a little bit tricky sometimes to get bogged down by little things. But instead of being like, oh, my husband left his clothes on the floor, to be like, what a better way to serve my husband than to pick up his clothes that he left on the floor. Like, we can choose to get upset over it or we can choose joy and choose to see that as an opportunity to serve him. And I think that's so beautiful and I am still really growing in this, but it's something that I've learned. Like constantly serve, constantly love them, constantly choose to serve them over choosing to do things for yourself. And if you both have that mindset, like you'll constantly be doing things for each other that are helping each other, encouraging each other and loving one another. And how beautiful is that? That's literally like what can be more beautiful. Now the third tip, probably the most important thing, but is to pray with your spouse. I think it's really easy to be like, I pray for my husband, I pray for my wife, but do you pray with them? Trevor and I are trying to grow in this area because it's something that we'll go through seasons where we'll say we need to pray together every single night or every single morning. And we like pray together during like meals and stuff, but I'm talking about like praying for our kids and our family and our life and Maple, my dog always chooses to get crazy as soon as I start to film. It can be easy to pray for your spouse and for your marriage and for your life and your kids and your family, but it's not always easy and at the forefront of your mind to pray about those things, but with your spouse. Like the Bible talks so much about unity and coming together and the two are one and just the power of two people coming together to pray about something. And so this is an area that sometimes we're really great at and sometimes we're really not, but we need to be better at it because praying with your spouse, like just when my husband and I come together and pray, even if we're exhausted and our eyes are closed and we're laying in bed together, like there is something so beautiful about him praying for our family and me praying for our family. And it doesn't have to be these long, like I think a lot of Christians can get confused and be like, I'm not good at prayer. Well, prayer is not a sport you're trying to get better at. Prayer is just talking with your heavenly father and you can do it with your eyes open. You can do it with your eyes closed. You can do it while you're in the car. You can do it while you're folding your clothes. Like there are so many different ways you can talk to your father and doing that with the person that you've made a covenant relationship before Jesus with is so cool and so beautiful and just so unifying. And the last tip I want to share today, the last thing that I've learned, I mean, I've learned a lot of things, but the last one I'm going to share today is don't sweat the small things. I talked about this briefly, but like it can be really easy. So let's be vulnerable. My husband and I had a little argument this week and it was about ice cream. You heard it right. You heard it here. Ice cream was the reason. Obviously there was a lot that happened with ice cream, but ice cream was the reason we got into a little tiff. And I thought about it the next day. We were both like pretty upset and just kind of like emotional about just, you know, not being on the same page with things, whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't need to go into it. Like at the end of the day, it's like, it's such a small thing. Like why are we allowing the enemy to get in here and cause dissension over something as small as this. And I think it can be so easy to do that. And so don't sweat the small things. It's so easy to. The enemy would love nothing more than to try to come in. And most likely that's going to be through the small things, not some big ordeal, but through those little mundane things of getting under your skin to be like, your husband left his clothes on the floor. Your husband didn't do this. Your husband didn't do this. 
And the Bible talks so much about a nagging wife and how just like that's like a leaking faucet and just annoying and it's like wives we don't want to be annoying like a dripping faucet and so not letting those tiny things get under your skin and instead choosing those times to pray over your husband and again not saying i'm speaking as a wife i can't speak for my husband and so i'm not saying husbands are always at blame that's not what i'm saying at all i'm just saying from a wife's perspective praying for your husband and choosing those small moments that you could be like this could really upset me i could say something right now but choosing to tame your tongue, to pray for him, and to pray about it instead of complaining. So those are my four things or four tips for marriage that I've learned in the last four years of marriage. I might pop a couple little pictures on the screen from our wedding day because anytime I can share those is a good day because I just, I'm obsessed with all of them. We got like over a thousand pictures back and a video and I'm just literally obsessed with them. So any reason to share them is great. But I would love to know in the comments, how long have you and your spouse been married? What things have you learned in that time? Would love that because we can all learn from each other. Like I said, we've only been married four years. We got a lot of learning and a lot of growing to do. And yes, we've come a long way, but we still have a lot more things that will come up and things that we will learn over the next many, many decades that we are together. So thank you all for watching. Comment below and we'll see you next time. Bye.